Hey folks, so last week we finished up the kind of home built spindle control using that little L298N little um, motor driver to provide that analog signal out. So this week I want to kind of show you my Linux CNC configuration to actually make the spindle do what we want it to. So right now it's not quite right. I've been tinkering with it a little bit in the interest of not making a, a really boring video for you. I've got a little bit of a handle on it, still not dialed in perfect, but pretty close. So let's dive right in. All right, so first of all, you can see my screen right here and a million icons, I'm terrible about that. But the main thing I wanna do is go into the step config wizard. All right, hop in the step config wizard, hit start. We're gonna modify an existing one. Uh, mine is my mill four because I don't like to name things with things I can remember. And I'm just going to go through here. So forward, this is my inputs. Um, I've already got pin 14 as my spindle PWM, so that's good. And then what we care about is the spindle page that comes up after you select a, or assign a pin to be spindle PWM. PWM rate, I did 490 because the board was working good with my Arduino as the input, and the Arduino's put out 490, so I left it there. Uh, as far as speed one and speed two, I went from zero RPM to 4,500 RPM because um, 4,500 is what Little Machine Shop um, advertises their belt drive conversion can do. And so I said the pulse width is gonna be zero at zero RPM, uh, it's going to be 100%, so 1 at 4,500 RPM. And so you go ahead and do that, hit done, um, save it, hop in. And you hear that? That's the little signal going to the spindle right there. You hear that little hum. So we're in there, turn the machine on, boom, and we can hit the spindle on. So that's enabling it. That's 100 RPM, nothing's happening. You can kind of hear a little hum, 200, it's starting to move. So that's at 200 right there, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 8, 9, and 1,000. So right there we've got 1,000 RPM commanded to the spindle. And I went ahead and went on Amazon and picked up one of these little, um, they're like a laser photo tachometer. So that's what that little piece of tape on my spindle is. It picks up that tape with this laser and it gives me an RPM readout. So there's an affiliate link in the description uh, if you wanna check it out. Had mixed reviews. I figured it's like 20 some dollars. Um, I figured if it works for this job, it's worth it. And so far you'll see here that it, it works good. Okay, here it is spinning. You can see the little square on there going around. Let's point the laser right at that dot. I don't know if you can see the readout, but I've got like 847, 848. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes this thing jumps around. Like right there, I moved it and it jumped all the way down to 300. So if you get really close, it goes crazy. You kind of got to find a sweet spot. Actually, right there, it's being pretty steady. 846, 850. So we're within a few RPM of 850, but we're commanding 1,000. All right, so my first thought was let's figure out what the max speed on the spindle really is because that is what's going to affect the scale. Um, so right now we've got it set telling Linux CNC that the max is 4,500. Let's see what it actually gets. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the spindle on and I'm just going to be lazy and click through up to 4,500 RPM. I actually clicked through to like 5400 just for good measure. Let's see what she's spinning at. So I am getting 3675. 4, 75, 79, so we'll call it 3677. Alright, so we're at about 3677 RPM. Um, 
that's probably not Little Machine Shop lying to us. It's probably because my little board, instead of giving a full 12 volts, is really giving like 11 and three quarters. So, but at the same time, if you do a linear relationship, a quarter of a volt probably isn't gonna give you 800 RPM. So, so maybe it's a little bit of both, but for now, what we need to do is go back into the step config wizard and change that 4500 to, crap, what did I say? 3677. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we've got our max and mins dialed in at least, let's go ahead and just start playing around with it from the low end. So spindle enabled, 100 RPM, still really doesn't do anything at 100 RPM. I mean, if you did the math on that, you'd get like 10 RPM or something. 200 RPM, let's see what we're getting. So at 200 RPM, we're getting like 118, 120 RPM. So 200 commanded, 120 is actual. So about an 80 difference, 80 RPM difference. 300. Three hundred, we're getting like two forty, two thirty-eight. Yeah, about two forty, two thirty-nine, two forty. So you see, that's a sixty RPM difference. So that the gap is closing. If we run it up to, let's do five hundred. So five hundred RPM, I'm predicting it's going to be four fifty, maybe four sixty. See, and this thing's a little jumpy sometimes. Actually, even better than I thought, 475. So, when you start getting into the higher numbers, I think there's just, you know, inertial forces and whatnot on this motor where, you know, it, it's not perfect. It's going to be a little slower at first, but once you start giving it some RPM, it goes away. So, let's go to like a thousand. So I got about 1,054, and it's actually really steady on this little gauge. So 1,054, we're about 50 off in the other direction, which is kind of interesting. Now we're reading high. What if we go to 2,000? You see that number just about doubled, the, the error doubled. Because now we're sitting at about 2100, so 2100, 2120, and the commanded is only 2000, so about 100, 120 error. Try 3000, see if it levels off at some point. So now we're at about 3,050. So it seems to be the air is closing again. And then we should be at max now, 37 or 3670. Yeah, that's what we're at right now. I've got command at 4,000. Once it goes over 3670, it's just done. It's not gonna go any faster than I, no matter how many times I click the button. So at this point with it, I'm kind of trying to decide if what I've got for now is acceptable. I mean, my biggest error, I think, was right around, what, 2,000, where it was like 100, 110, 120 off. You know, it's not horrible. Um, I'd like it to be, like, dead on. That would be great. But I think um, the way the motor controllers are, they're not perfect to where, you know, you can just scale. This PWM 0 to 100 is going to be exactly in line with this RPM 0 to 3670 or whatever. So you kind of get to like, what level of effort do I really want to put into this thing? Am I okay with being 100 RPM off at, at some point in time? And also when I go to cut a big chunk of aluminum, is this thing going to bog down a little bit? And, and so all this hard work to get this thing perfect might just be for, for just about nothing. You know, those are all things to, that I'm kind of working through and trying to consider. Um, Right now, for me, to be honest, 100 RPM off isn't bad. And if that's the worst it is, and I know where the band is, where it's off, then I can kind of work around that. 
Um, what I would like to do, and I need to do some research first, is try and figure out if I could hook up some type of feedback. So this motor could say, you know, I'm being commanded 1000 RPM, I'm pushing 900 out, and that goes back to a controller, which figures out there's a 100 RPM error, gives the con motor controller a little bit more, more voltage, and compensates for it. I think that would be cool. So uh, that will probably be an upcoming project. Um, and with that, depending on how close we can get to, to being like right on point, then we're starting to talk about maybe some tapping and, and threading and that kind of stuff. So, so stay tuned. Um, sorry if I'm a little lame tonight, but it's been a long week, I tell you what. So, so glad to get a video out. Um, hope you guys like it. So I will see you next week.